This message carries a sobering tone because the topic of the rapture is indeed sobering. It is a thought that not everyone who attends church on Sunday will be raptured, and this realization can be quite solemn. Considering the vast number of churches around the world, each congregation will have a varying number of people taken on the day of the rapture. For instance, one church with 10,000 members may see only three members being raptured, while another church of the same size might witness 9,000 members being raptured. Some churches may have only 10% of their congregation raptured, while others may experience 100% of their congregation being taken. It is a thought that evokes a sense of sobriety and reflection. In some churches, mentioning the topic of the rapture is frowned upon, and believers may feel ashamed or hesitant to discuss it. However, it is important not to be ashamed of the rapture, even if those around you do not believe it will happen. Similar to how the world viewed Noah as crazy when he preached about the flood, believers should not let societal opinions discourage them from acknowledging the reality of the rapture. Reflecting on the days of Noah, we recall that only eight people were saved out of the millions that populated the earth at that time. The ark provided salvation to less than 0.001% of the world's population. Considering this, it raises the question of how many people will be saved when the rapture occurs. It is indeed a sobering thought. Will 10% of the world's population be raptured? Will 20% of the world's population be raptured? Only the Lord knows. It is crucial to understand that there is no collective salvation or salvation based on marital relationships. Each individual needs to cultivate their own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. This realization further adds to the gravity and solemnity of the topic at hand. God's love for you is undeniable. It is something you know deep within your heart. However, we live in a generation where many deny the gospel. There are those who claim to be Christians but deny the need for repentance. Some question the authority of the Bible, while others doubt the occurrence of the rapture. Unfortunately, even some modern-day Christians deny the existence of hell. Yet, it is important to remember that the Lord Jesus Christ himself spoke about hell. He warned that if something causes you to sin, it is better to remove it, even if it means entering life with one eye, than to be cast in the fires of hell. He was using hyperbole here. However, he was being direct about hell and the seriousness of it. Hell is a real place, despite the accusations that mentioning it is an attempt to instill fear. No one spoke about hell as explicitly as the Lord Jesus Christ did in the Bible. However, those who are raptured will be spared from experiencing hell. I have often wondered how the world will explain the rapture and its aftermath. The rapture will be a monumental event, unlike anything the world has ever witnessed. The sudden disappearance of hundreds of thousands of people in the blink of an eye will leave the world in a state of confusion. Once the rapture occurs, every believer will be caught up to meet the Lord in the skies, while unbelievers will be left behind to grapple with the aftermath of this astonishing event. After the rapture takes place, the world left behind will experience a church service like no other. It will be a gathering of people who are utterly surprised and shocked that they have been left behind. The pews will be filled with individuals who had family members or friends who were believers and warned them about the impending rapture. The ramifications of this event will be immense and will reshape history in profound ways. Imagine the scene as these individuals gather together, desperately seeking answers and trying to make sense of what has just transpired. They will be faced with the undeniable reality of the rapture and the fact that they have been left behind. The emotions in that church service will range from confusion and fear to grief and regret. Many will feel a deep sense of loss as they realize the truth of their loved one's warnings and the missed opportunity to be part of the raptured saints. This church service will be a pivotal moment in the lives of those left behind. It will be a time of reflection soul-searching, and grappling with the implications of their unbelief. 
they will witness firsthand the consequences of rejecting the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. The realization that they had dismissed or disregarded the warnings of their believing family members and friends will weigh heavily upon them. The world left behind will be thrust into a period of great turmoil and confusion as it tries to come to terms with the rapture and its aftermath. Only the Lord knows what will ensue as people grapple with the unexplained events and the massive void left by the departed believers. The church service after the rapture will serve as a powerful wake-up call for those who remain. It will force them to confront the reality of their choices and the truth of God's Word. Some may turn to faith in Christ, seeking redemption and salvation in the midst of chaos. Others, however, may respond with anger, defiance, or a hardened heart, refusing to acknowledge the truth and instead seeking to find alternative explanations or comfort in their own understanding. In the aftermath of the rapture, the world will be forever changed. The church service that follows will mark a pivotal moment in human history, a moment when the ramifications of unbelief and rejection of God's grace become undeniable. It will be a time of reckoning, a time for individuals to grapple with their choices and seek truth in the midst of unprecedented events. The Christians who will not be caught in the rapture are those who are Christians in name only. These individuals may profess to follow Christ, but they have not truly believed in his name. They attend church, but have never experienced genuine spiritual rebirth. Their minds may be filled with knowledge, but their hearts are far from God. It would be devastating for them to realize that the rapture has occurred and they have not been taken up while the events described in the book of Revelations are about to unfold. It is entirely possible for someone to possess extensive knowledge about the Word of God, but lack a genuine relationship with Him. The issue lies in these Christians being friends with the world. Consequently, their spiritual life becomes a mere facade. Instead, we should strive to fight the good fight of faith and live a Christian life that is consistent and wholehearted. Let us not settle for surface-level Christianity where we only identify as Christians when it is convenient. Superficial Christians may attend church and claim to love it, but deep down, they are in love with the world and its desires. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 16 admonishes us not to love the world or anything in it. If we love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not from the Father, but from the world. The allurements of this world are real and it can provide temporary pleasures and distractions that make us forget about eternal matters. As Christians, it is important for us to acknowledge that sin can offer temporary pleasures, but ultimately, it leads to destruction. Now, when speaking about rapture, some people are afraid of it or feel a sense of apprehensiveness regarding the rapture because they are not sure they will be caught up. They are scared that they will fall in the first group of people I have discussed. But I want to encourage you that the rapture is an event you should long for. Don't fear whether you are saved or not. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You can know you are saved because the Spirit bears witness that you are born again. You know you are saved because your life has changed and is changing and is continuing to change. You are becoming less and less like your old self and more and more like a disciple of Jesus. Don't fear the rapture. Look forward to it. How can you not look forward to it? How can you not look forward to heaven? Allow me to be just honest for a second. This world is a mess. It's a complete mess. Joy never ever lasts in this world. And this world has a strange way of shocking you. This world is so broken and nothing lasts forever. Even the most wonderful, most glorious marriages of this earth still end with death. Even the most wonderful marriage still ends 
with one of the two being heartbroken when the other one dies. But when the Lord Jesus comes and claims his church, there will be no more death. Imagine that, living a life where there is no death. Look forward to the rapture, because after the rapture, there is no more death. Oh, I have seen families weep. I have seen families weep bitter tears. Pastors see that. Pastors see what others don't usually get to see. Time and time again, I have seen families feel grief, real grief, real pain, real sorrows. When they lose the person, the person that is near and dear to them. I encourage you to look forward to the rapture and the coming of the Lord. Sometimes when I'm riding my motorbike under the shining sun, I think to myself, what if he comes now? That is our hope, our blessed hope. I ride for hours, eagerly anticipating his arrival. At any moment, the Lord Jesus Christ could come and call out our names, and we will leave this world. Look forward to it, my friends, because when he comes, all your sorrows will end forever. Look forward to his coming, for when he comes, you will never have to worry about your health again. Sickness has troubled humanity, affecting people of all ages and fitness levels. But in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, all sickness will be gone. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Jesus, Jesus himself said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. The angels said, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The rapture doesn't have a specific date. It will happen suddenly and quickly in just a moment. The archangel's trumpet will announce it. Those who have died as believers in Christ will hear it and rise from their graves with new glorious bodies. They will join the Lord in the sky. Even though they are gone, they are waiting. We who are still here on earth are also waiting for the rapture.